tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence
much desire Oh, how I need you more fresh outpour With no resistance I give permission Welcome 
Uh, my name is Ed Jones. I'm the senior pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church, and we're so grateful that you're here today. We want to encourage you to know that the Lord has brought you to this place because he has destiny inside of you, and we're grateful to share this moment with you. If you're a first-time guest with us, we want to make sure we have an opportunity to connect with you. You'll see a button that pops up there. Please let us know that you are, are here. It's a way that we can connect with you and make sure we do our best to follow up with you in the future. We also want to make sure everyone knows that there are uh, some significant things going on in life of the church. Uh, Baptism Sunday is coming on Pentecost Sunday, if you desire to be baptized, you'll see a button that pops up there. We also want to make sure that uh, on that day uh, of uh, June the 5th, uh, which is Pentecost Sunday, we'll also have a, uh, uh, the Warren Christian uh, uh, bap, uh, Prayer Garden uh, dedication. Uh, immediately after service, so we want to make sure that you attend that. We also have an opportunity uh, for you to engage with us uh, in the community garden that will be coming up at the end of the month on Saturday from 10 to 1. Uh, we have a lot of great vendors, and we also have U of H, uh, uh, our music department out. Uh, so look forward to seeing you, seeing you that Sunday I mean, that Saturday, and we will also be distributing communion elements for all those who would like to receive uh, communion elements on that day. So uh, we have been in a series called Creed, uh, a study of what Christians believe. Uh, we, we, we covered, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus Christ, and today we're unpacking, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, that short, concise statement completes the Trinity. It declares uh, to the followers of Jesus Christ that, that we believe in the third person of the Trinity, uh, the Holy Spirit. So join me in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, thank you for reading that with us. We have been reading that every week, and we'll, we'll continue to read that uh, during the, 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 the series. It's the, 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 the document of our faith to help make sure what Christians believe. Uh, majority of the Christian faith hold this as the concise statement of what we believe. Uh, but today's word will be... Uh, uh, coming from John, the 14th chapter, uh, verse 16 and 18. John, the 14th chapter, verse 16 uh, through 18. If you really love me, you will keep my, keep and obey my commandments. And if, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world could not receive and, and take to its heart because it d does not see him or know him, but you know him because he the Holy Spirit remains with you continually and will be in you 
I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, bereaved, and helpless. I will come back to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. May the people of God type, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. As we continue our, 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 our study, it is very clear that at the beginning of Genesis, the Holy Spirit is referenced in Genesis the first chapter, verse 2. In Genesis, the first chapter, verse 2, the scripture says, And the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness, and darkness was all over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. From the beginning of time, from the beginning in Genesis, the word lets us know that the Holy Spirit was present. All the way to the end of, in Revelations, this Holy Spirit is referenced. In Re Revelations, the 22nd chapter, verse 17, the scripture says, the Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, believers say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who wishes to take and drink the water of life without cost. See, the Holy Spirit was present at the beginning of the church, and it continues to move the church into the present day. All the way at the beginning, you can find the Holy Spirit in John, the 20th chapter, verse 21 and 22. It says, and Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The church born in the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. And, and, and then Jesus tells his disciples in Acts, the first chapter, you will receive power from the Holy Spirit comes in on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit empowered, directed, and guided the church from the get-go. It was in those moments, in those times, when the followers of Christ began to preach the word boldly through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 44 and 45, Scripture says, while Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit, get this, had been poured out on Gentiles. That's something that's significant, that the, the Holy Spirit was poured out on Gentiles, who were considered those who were not part of the faith. But they believed in Jesus, and the message of God impregnated them with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Barabbas in Barnabas and Saul fasted and prayed, and the Holy Spirit sent them to grow the church. In Acts the 13th chapter, verse 4, it says, The two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to St. Lucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. See, not only the Holy Spirit was 
at the beginning and at the end, the Holy Spirit was empowering, directing, and guiding the early church. The Holy Spirit attempts to continue to empower, direct, and guide each and every one of the believers of Jesus Christ. In our text today, Jesus tells his disciples, I'm going to go away. However, I'm going to send you another helper. I'm going to send you someone to do for you, much like I have been doing for you. I'm going to send someone to show you the ropes. I'm going to send someone to encourage you, to, to model for you, to prompt you, to guide you. In, in everything that that one, I want you to do what that one tells you to do. So look at John, the, the 14th chapter, verse 16. It says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. The scripture says, another helper, a comforter, advocate, an intercessor, a, a, a counselor, a strengthener, a standby. Jesus is letting the disciples know that the Holy Spirit will come. And, 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 and so I want to make sure I have opportunity to look at some di distinctive ways that the Holy Spirit moves. And one of the ways is the Holy Spirit that comes after us. The Holy Spirit that comes after us. Somebody type that in the chat. The Holy Spirit that comes after us. Before many of us was in our right mind, the Holy Spirit was coming after us. Some of us have been in uh, with the Lord so long that you don't remember uh, 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 where the Lord found you. Uh, you don't remember how the Lord had shifted and guided and, and molded in some of those dark alleys, some of those dungeons, some of those, those, those back rooms, some of those places that you should not have been. The Lord found you there, and the Holy Spirit did something. Uh, and in John, the 15th chapter, verse 26, the uh, scripture says, when the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, stand by comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, he will, this is important, testify and bear witness about me. He will testify and bear witness about me. The scriptures let us know that when the Holy Spirit comes, he's testifying and witnessing what the Spirit of God is going to do in us and through us. And so it's important for us to know how God is going to shift and move things. He reaches you in those dark, in those dark spaces to show you the light. He will help you know the truth about you. Uh, he will help you know uh, what you need to become. He will show you what God is moving you toward. Some people don't know who they are because they don't know Christ. And because they don't know Christ, they don't know what the Lord wants them to do. They are clueless to how the Lord is moving toward their preferred future. There's, there's, there's this understanding that some of us may have remembered uh, how sometimes you can, you, you can become somebody else because you don't have all what it takes. Take a look at this commercial. Take a look at this. Mike, what is your deal, oh, man? Oh, come on, man. You've been riding me all day. Mike, you're playing like Betty White out there. That's not what your girlfriend said. Oh. Baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my my not close. Eat a Snickers. Better? Better. Hey, I'm all bad. That hurt. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. You're not you when you're hungry. Uh, you're not you without Christ. Uh, you're not you 
when the Holy Spirit is not uh, uh, leading and guiding you. You're not you when you are not uh, uh, following the Father. You're not you. And, and the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to re realize when we are not you. I say that again. When you're not you, the Holy Spirit is the one to let you know that you're not you. The Holy Spirit will let you know when you can do better. The Holy Spirit will let you know when you, 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 you are stronger than that. The Holy Spirit will let you know that you're smarter than that. The Holy Spirit will let you know that it's time to change. The Holy Spirit will let you know that it's time to do better. The Holy Spirit will let you know it's time to stop tipping and start tithing. It's the Holy Spirit will let you know that you need to stand up. The Holy Spirit will let you know you need to sit down. The Holy Spirit will let you know. And, and as the Holy Spirit comes after us, when the Holy Spirit captures us, it is not to make you nothing but a mirror reflection of Jesus Christ. To become who God wants you to become. And that's this next part. The, the Holy Spirit comes inside us. In 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 13, Scripture says, uh, for, for by one Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, spiritually transformed, united together, whether Jews or Greeks, Gentiles, slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one Holy Spirit since the Holy Spirit fills each life. The Holy Spirit fills us. The Holy Spirit comes into us. It rearranges things. When we open our mouths and open our hearts that we can, can, can experience what God desires. One of the reasons why we are making sure that we have Baptism Sunday is because we want to make sure people remember when the time and the day when they came out of the water that the Holy Spirit fills them. Sometimes we don't remember when we're kids. That's why I'm so grateful that our confirmation class have an opportunity and several adults have said, hey, I need to, I need to remember my baptism. And, and some people who have never been baptized, it's something about that because in our belief, when people are baptized, that's when they are filled with the Spirit. They confess with their mouth. They believe in their heart that Jesus Christ lived, died, and was uh, uh, resurrected, that he, and then we baptize them, and when they come up, they come up as a new creature. Scriptures says in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, Verse 19, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who's in, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. It, you, 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 you have to understand the scriptures is letting us know that you were bought for a price, that Jesus Christ lived, died, and was resurrected so that you can experience the wholeness of life, to, to live life to the full, to the overflow. And he did that so that the Holy Spirit can come inside of you and direct you. And, and I love to say it, to claim homestead in you. To, 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 to not just visit you one time, to, to, to take residence in you. And I know you might hear and think, I am a believer and I'm already a Christian. I already have the Holy Spirit. Why do I need to ask uh, for more of the Holy Spirit? Why do I need to ask again? I, I don't need to put the Holy Spirit uh, uh, on, on, on my wish list. Look, Jesus is addressing something here that's very important. It's very important. And if you can go back to the 10th chapter, Jesus is talking to people who are his followers. And he's telling those people that they need to be 
baptized, that they need to be filled with the Spirit. And, and so if Jesus is letting his disciples know, those men and women who was already saved, those who confess with their mouth, believe in their heart that Jesus lived, died, and was resurrected. All those who were regenerated by the Holy Spirit, sealed with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, indwelt with the Holy Spirit, but they did not know this one part. And this is the part that I want to make sure we never forget. Jesus is let us know that the Holy Spirit is not only there to come in, to come after you, to come in you, but the Holy Spirit is to transform you, to lead you somewhere where you are not currently located, to take you to a place where God desires for you to be. He doesn't want you to, he doesn't come inside of you to keep you there. He comes inside of you to take you there. Now somebody needs to put that in the chat. He didn't come inside of you to keep you there. He comes inside of you to take you there. Remember what Paul says in, in Ephesians, do not get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. It's a continuous verb, meaning when he comes inside, it is not just once, it's an everyday type of thing. It's feeling in overpowering by the Holy Spirit every day that the Holy Spirit is moving. It's, it's as if we're saying we're open conduit for the Holy Spirit to continuously flow through us to make us what we need to be. It's so important that we understand that. I want to go back to John, the 14th chapter. John, the 14th chapter. And in John, the 14th chapter, it says, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you under a circle that continually, continually. And he will be in you. See, it's this understanding of being continuously moving toward what God has for you. Continually moving toward the preferred future. And it's, some of us have allowed our culture to suppress, to, eat, to, to quench to, to, to throw, a, a fire, throw water on the Holy Spirit fire to keep us the same. The Holy Spirit does not want us the same. The Holy Spirit is there to transform you daily. I pray that all of us just have the opportunity to say, God, change me daily. There, there's a video that I want you to see of a follower of Christ that chose not to grow up, a follower of Christ that chose not to become what God wants them to become. Take a look at this. Well, summer's almost over. I guess it's been pretty good. Just been hanging out with my friends. Oh, we won our Little League Championship. I was MVP. Don't mean to brag, but 57 home runs, only one strikeout. Every summer goes by faster. It's kind of depressing, but I guess I'm ready to go back. A lot of people have been giving me a hard time lately, saying I'm too big for t-ball, too big for kindergarten, pushing me to graduate. I almost did it once a few years back. I heard that first graders got to write in cursive. Sounded pretty cool. But in the end, I just couldn't do it. I have my iPhone anyway. Bonnie, what does CA say? Death dog. My kids are a little embarrassed that they're further along than I am. Hey, girls. But I figure when it's time to go to first grade, I'll know it. It'll be obvious. The heavens will part. A voice will thunder. Johnny, it's time. You need to graduate kindergarten. Johnny, it's time. You need to graduate kindergarten. Eh, not thundery enough. One, two, three. Go, go, go! Woo! 
If I graduate kindergarten, then I won't be eligible for t-ball. And I'm the man out here, a slugger, a star, and the only player on the team that hasn't had an accident in his baseball pants. Out there, who knows? I'm just not feeling it, you know? I don't feel called. I don't feel called to make myself uncomfortable. I don't feel called to no more summer breaks. I don't feel called to dad's pitch. Why have somebody throw a rock hard baseball at me when I can hit it off of a tee? You know what I'm saying? Why do something that's hard when you can do something that's easy? I mean, we're undefeated. Why mess that up? It just doesn't make sense. But I guess some people don't get it. I guess some people just aren't smart enough to figure out how to stay comfortable, how to make life easy. It's kind of sad. I feel sorry for them. Brothers and sisters, we have people in our life that refuse to grow. We have people in our life who refuse to, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to move them to a place to mature in Christ, to become a different person, to, to, to grow in areas that the Holy Spirit has revealed to them. Some of us have allowed the Holy Spirit to leave us behind. Brothers and sisters, I don't want us to be in that number. We all need to grow. That's why I started this with just saying, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage you to know when the Holy Spirit comes, you will be uncomfortable. You will be in a place you've never been before. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is taking you where the Lord desires for you to be. Come, Holy Spirit. Direct us. Shape us. Mold us. Come, Holy Spirit. If you are one who desires to take that st first step in the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you to know that the Holy Spirit invites you to come. He's ready for you. He's not judging you that you are choosing to come at this time or this place. He wants you to take that next step. In a few weeks, we will be promoting some things that we're encouraging people to take the next step. We all need to take the next step in some way or the other. We invite you to take that next step with us. If you have never connected with a church, you'll see a button that pops up there. We, we just want to grow with you. If you never gave your life to Jesus Christ, take the next step. If you desire, you'll see a button to take that pops up there. Know that the Lord is, is, is excited about you making that choice, making that decision. Know that we have to do everything we can to grow to our full potential. And one of the things that I'm grateful for is that you have decided today to take the next step. Brothers and sisters, we're at the end of our time together. I want to make sure and encourage for those of you who desire to give, uh, you'll see a button that pops up there. I want to make sure that you uh, know that you can give in several different ways. Or you'll see something that pops up on the screen with all the different ways that you can give. Please allow the Lord to use you. If you desire to, to participate in any of the ministries, uh, there are some buttons, uh, several buttons will pop up inviting you to sign up to participate. Hey, I uh, look forward to seeing you, especially, I want to make sure I continue to plug. Uh, we're having that marriage retreat. I want to encourage all those who are signing up. Uh, we want to encourage you to do so. Look forward to seeing you next week as we continue our series. Right, be blessed in the Lord. Receive this benediction. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you now, both forever and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.